Okay, so this is for the review. I had some people wanted to do a review, and especially since today, today's Friday, where we had the strange uh, bell schedule, I wanted to make sure A-Day had time to review, okay? So these are things that you will want to focus on on the test, okay? And I'll try and go over an example from each of these. First off, um, write the equation. We want to write the equation given us the center and the radius, okay? Um, for example, if they give us the center, which is um, 2 comma negative 3, and they also tell you that the radius is equal to 4, you would need it to plug into the equation for a circle. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Okay, so we would plug this in for our radius and we make sure we square it and then we'll plug in our h and our k. So that would give us x minus 2 squared plus y minus a negative 3 gives you a positive 3 squared equals r squared which is 4. 4 squared is 16. So this would be your answer. Okay, so really make sure you have this stuck in your brain. Okay, um, and just remember one thing you could maybe miss, have a mistake is when you plug this in you don't have to worry about switching the signs. This will change it, the sign for you because it's a negative H. And this is just an H and this is a K. So it'll switch the sign for you. All right. Next, center. Given the center and a point on the center, write the equation. So let's see if we can find one. A center, the center and a point on, on the circle. So I'm just going to go and look at our review. See if I can find one. All right. Right, here we go. No, that's the one we just barely did. So this is where, where they give you a center and a radius. You'll need to come up with that equation. You'll also need to find ones where they give you the center and a point on the circle. So you may want to write down the equation first. Um, <clears throat> x minus 16 squared, um, I guess I'm just plugging these in, plus y minus 13 squared equals the radius squared. So it's just like we did in the last problem, except we don't know what the radius is. We have a point on the circle, which is our x and our y. So we'll plug those in. That gives us 18 minus 16 squared plus 15 minus 13 squared equals r squared. Okay, you can plug this whole thing into your calculator or you can do it by hand. This gives us um, 2 squared plus 2 squared equals r squared or 4 plus 4 equals r squared, which equals 8. Okay, so now that we know that r squared equals 8, we will substitute that back in for r squared. So our final answer would be x minus 16 squared plus y minus 13 squared equals 8. And you don't have to worry about squaring that 8 or squaring it because this is already r squared. And we're just going to replace r squared with 8. Okay, so that would be your answer. Um, do some examples with that if you have a hard time. Perhaps do 28 and 30 as well. Okay, let's see what the next point or next thing that we need to focus on is identify the center and radius giving given an equation. OK, 
Okay, let's see what we can do. So we already have the equation. We want to write down the center and the radius. Okay. So for example, this is the first thing is, is identify, identify the center and radius. Okay, so we'll just do that. Um, so your center will always be, when we take something out of a parenthesis, like these, you'll change those signs. So that will give us negative 2, comma, positive 2. Okay, or here, like you could do that really quick. Um, so that would be a positive 4 and a negative 3. Okay, and then we need to also need to know what the radius is. So this right here, this is r squared. So if we want to find out what r is, we will want to take the square root of 16 equals 4. So that gives us our two things that we're asked for. Okay, so let's see what else we got. So we got check. Oops. Huh forgetting that it doesn't change. So we got that, we got that, we got that. And that'll be about five points on your test, um, which is about, actually, maybe I should do percentages. I shall do that next time. Um, okay, um, next, solve a system of equation by substitution. We just barely did that. It was 7.3. You can look at your notes. If you don't remember, We'll go and do one of those problems. I think it's the very beginning of your or your review. Well, that's graphing. This is substitution. Okay, so perhaps um, let's focus on ones that are the more difficult ones that aren't linear. Linear. Let's do a quadratic and a linear. Okay, so here. First thing to do for substitution is to solve one of your equations equal to y. Check, they both are. So one is done. Two, we will plug one thing, one of our, uh, what we solve for y, and plug it into the other equation. So we'll get x squared minus x minus 12 equals x plus 3. Thing that we said in our notes is that we need to make sure that one side is equal to zero. Okay, so we will subtract x and subtract 3 to both sides. Okay, those will cancel and we'll get x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals zero. And then you will do glasses. Let me change my color. Something like that. And you'll get negative 15. And two things that we need to multiply to give us negative 15 and add to give us a negative 2. Okay, so you can start listing things. You could do 1 and 15. You could do 3 and 5. And those are the only choices we have. Okay, this will never get us where we want to be. But this one will. So negative 5 plus 2, or 3, I mean, gives us a negative 2. And when you multiply them, it gives us negative 15. So here we will rewrite this as x minus 5 and x plus 3 equal to 0. And then... We will need to solve each of these equal to zero. Okay, so oftentimes I will, I will just go straight and skip that part and say we're going to get x equals five and x equals uh, negative three because when you plug that in, that gives us zero, and when we plug that in, that gives us zero. Okay, oftentimes I would write it like this minus five equals zero, and then we would add five to both sides and we'd get x equals 5. Okay, so that is, that is basically what we do when we're solving for those x's. Okay, so those are our two x's, and then the next step, sorry, this was 3, this is 
step four is to take these two x values and plug them in to one of your equations, okay? I always like to put it into the equation that we have from step one. So we plug those in, we'll get y equals five plus three equals eight, and then the other one, y equals negative three plus three equals zero. Step five is to write it as an ordered pair. So five comma eight from the first, and then negative three comma zero for the other. Okay. Um, make sure you will have problems like this, and you will also need to be able to do problems like these, where it's a circle equation. Okay. Um, so, but you do the same steps. The only thing that would maybe be a little different is, um, so for example, 11. Usually I say solve for y. It doesn't matter which variable you solve for to start with. So if you wanted to, you could add 3y to both sides. And you'll get x equals 3 plus 3y. And then we can take this and plug that in for x. Okay? So you'd get 3 plus 3y squared plus y squared equals 3. And this is the, the part where I just want to make sure you're understanding is that when we have something squared, what we're doing is we are multiplying it. Like, for example, if you had 4 squared, that is 4 times 4. This, 3 plus 3y squared, that is 3 plus 3y times 3 plus 3y. Okay? Plus y squared equals 3. And then after that, you would FOIL. And you combine like terms, and then once you've combined like terms, you will have something in that will be like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and then you will still do foil, or not foil, glasses, factor, and you would come up with the things that you needed for your two x values. And then you would plug those x values back into... Um, one of your equations, okay? Oh, sorry, these aren't x values, these are y values. All right, so um, I don't want to do all of your homework for you, so I'm just going to leave it a little bit so you can struggle with that. Like I said, the answers are at the back of your review, so once you have that, um, check that and make sure you're doing it right. Okay, if you didn't get it right, come and talk to me about it, okay? All right, okay, next, let's look at the next thing that is important. Okay, so here we go, we got this one done. Next, given a circle equation, graph and list the center and radius. Graph and list the center of radius. Okay, so... Given a, given a circle equation. Okay, sorry, I just want to make sure I don't forget what I'm trying to find. Okay. Graph and list. Okay, yeah, back here. Basically the same thing. Okay, except the only other thing you need to do is graph it. And we did, we already found the, C, the center and the radius. So all we would need to do is graph it. So the center is at negative 2, 2, which is right here, and the radius is 4. So you'll go four directions from your center, okay, and you'll be something like that. All right, that pretty much, simple, simple, uh, pretty much covers that. All right. And then, given a graph of a circle, write the equation. So now that we have a graph, we just want to come up with the equation. Let's see if we can find a graph like this. Okay? So, 
man, I should have just had you guys do, do all of these problems. Because now you only have to do pretty much half of them. Half of the half that I asked you to do. Um, but please, do the whole thing. Because <laughs> it's not, that doesn't take that long. Especially with like these kind of problems. Okay, so here we got the circle. We need to come with an equation. First thing you want to do is write down the center. Which is really easy because it's just the point that's right in the middle. Here it's negative 3, negative 3. Radius is just the distance from the center to the circle. Okay, and that is 1. Radius will always be positive. So if you like decided you wanted to go that way, your radius would still be 1. All right, it's a length, and there's not negative length. Okay? All right, now that you have those, hopefully you remembered the equation for a circle. If not, practice that. Okay, but this is our h, this is our k. We just plug it into our equation. So our answer will be x minus a negative 3 is a positive 3 squared plus y minus a negative 3 is a positive 3 squared equals 1 squared, which is 1, All right? All right, that's not too bad either. Check that off. Solve systems of equations by graphing. All right, I think that was the one that was the very first in the review. Okay, so here we want to solve by graphing. So they give us the equations, we just need to graph those equations. And there's two types. One is a circle, circle equation and one where it is a parabola. Okay, um, so let's do, the circle one is the easiest, so I'm going to do number one for you. Okay, and hopefully you are able to do this with three. I mean, you can find the center and the radius, just like we've done before. Graph that, graph that circle, and then we have this linear equation where this is your y-intercept and your slope would be 1 over 1, okay? So hopefully you can do that one pretty good by yourself. Um, number 1, here these ones are a little more difficult. Like I said, if you have a graphing calculator, you're welcome to plug both of these into your graphing calculator. Um, oftentimes, once I've graphed it, I, I select second um, graph, and that gives you a table of like here if you did all three of them or all two equations you'd get like your x and then you'd have y1 and y2 and you would be able to find it like zero for the first equation it would tell you whatever number that is and your other number and you can make your graphs that way which is fine okay um, but make sure when you're doing the test that you, you write down what the steps that how you did that on your calculator so I know that you're doing it um, right or not cheating, okay? Otherwise, like I said, I always prefer not to graph and to do it by hand. So let's do the parabola first. Okay, first we need to find the vertex. And vertex is always negative b over 2a and then plug it into the equation. Okay, so we'll plug this once we have it, into our equation. All right, so let's give that a shot. Negative b is 8, so negative 8 over, all over 2 times a, which is 2. That gives us negative 2. Now that we have this negative 2, we'll plug that into our x's, and we'll get y equals, this is x equals, y equals, 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus 10. Okay, you could plug, plug that into your calculator, um, or you can do it by yourself, by hand I mean. Uh, minus 
16 plus 10, so it would be 8 minus 16 plus 10, um, and that gives you y equals uh, 2, okay? So our vertex is negative 2 comma 2, and we plug that in right here, and then we'd need to use our growth pattern. A here is 2, right here, and our growth pattern is 1A, 3A, and 1 times 2 equals 2, and 3 times 2 is 6. So we go over 1, up 2, over 1, up 6, both directions. Okay. Oop. All right, and then our other equation, I'll do orange. This is our y-intersect, which is negative 2. And the slope is negative 2 over 1. So our rise is not rise, really. It's opposite of rising. It's decreasing down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. And then it would go the same here. Right? Oops. Okay, so here you maybe want to use a straight edge, okay, but the way I drew that, it doesn't look perfect, um, just because my parabola is not as round at the tip, okay, it probably should be more like this, okay, so here we can see these two points. And there will always be two. If you did your parabola a little off and and you weren't quite sure, um, it's always going to be the two points where they they hit. Okay, so here our two solutions will be negative two comma two and negative three comma four. Right? Bam! You got that. Check check back. Oops. All right, so we got that. Check that off. And make sure you know how to do it with a circle as well. Um, next, given the graph of a systems of equation, locate the intersections and write the equations. All right, let's see if we have some of those. So they give you, oops, I don't know what the, happened. Oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, see if we can find a graph of s two systems of equations. All right, we don't have them. So, um, but there may be one like that on the test. Basically, it's the opposite. You will have a graph that looks just like, not just like this, but similar to this, okay? And you will see these two equations. One may be linear like this, and one is a parabola, or one may be a circle and you will need to write down the equation. So assuming that we didn't have any of this information that I wrote down, all we had was the graph, what you would do is you would write your equation by first, uh, let's do the parabola first, and I'll do it over here. So first you'd want to write down what your vertex is. So the vertex here will be um, negative two comma two. And we need to know also what the growth pattern is. So for the growth pattern, you always start at your vertex, you go over one, and you go up and see how high it goes. So here it goes up two. So A will be two. Okay, and then you will write your equation. It doesn't need to be in vertex form. You can do it, or I mean, sorry, it doesn't need to be in inter... Or, uh, it doesn't need to be in standard form. You can just put it in vertex form because they give us the vertex that make it the easiest way to do that. So you do y equals a, which is 2, x minus h, and h is negative 2, so that gives us a positive 2 squared plus k, which is 2. So this would be one of our equations. The other equation you would need to write or find 
the light intercept, okay, for here, it is negative 2. And then you'd also need to know the slope, the rise over run. So here, you could take any point, you go down 2 over 1. Or you, if it makes more sense, you can go over 1, down 2. But make sure that this is your rise and this is your run. Okay, so rise over run is negative 2 over 1, which is negative 2. All right, so you'd want to write it as a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, plus b, which is your y-intercept. Okay, and same thing we had before, and you got that done. Okay, those are your two equations. And if they had a circle, um, we already know how to, if we had a circle, something like this, how to come up with that equation. You would find the center, like for this problem, it would be four comma two, and your radius here would be two. So you would write your equation that would be uh, x minus four squared plus x minus two squared equals four, because two, we want it to be r squared, so that gives us uh, four, okay? All right, so that should be pretty good for the test. Um, let's go back up there, okay. Check, and we're just getting a lot of stuff done. Last one, word problems, okay. Word problems, I know they're your favorite. Like you know, um, there's two types of uh, word problems. It looks like all of these don't have the ones where they give you the equation. So um, perhaps that's why it's more important. Okay, and I would perhaps agree. All right, so let's look at these, which one would probably be the best. Um, let's do this one, 18. I feel like this one probably would be most useful. Okay, so the admission fee for a small fare is 250 for children and $4 for adults. On a certain day, 2,200 2, or 2,2200 people entered the fair, and $5,050 is collected. How many children and how many adults attended? Okay, so when we did in class, we said first thing you want to write down is your variables. Variables are what we are looking for: how many children and how many adults. So let's do C equals the number of children and um, A is the number of adults. Okay, and I kind of told you about this before is oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes what we're going to be doing, it will always be your variable, and I said always, but I said oftentimes, C plus A equals something, and then we'll have something times C plus something times A equals something. Okay, so let's start with that and see if this works. Okay, if this makes sense, then we'll do it. If not, we'll have to look uh, elsewhere to try and find these equations. All right, first one, the number of children, the number of children plus the number of adults, so basically all of the people that went to the fair do they tell us someone here how many people entered the fair? Well, it does. It says right here, 2,200 uh, people. Okay, so that works perfect for our, our equation. Okay, and all of these, the units here, would be um, people, like children are people and adults are people, and the total of children and adults are still people. 
Okay, so the units would be kind of like, we're all kind of the same thing. All right, next, look at what else we have in here, numbers that we haven't used. So here we have 150, four dollars, and then we have five thousand and fifty dollars. So here our units for our next equation are all going to be dollars. And we want to put those all together. So since it's talking about the cost for children, you'll put 1.5 for the children, and for adults it's 4. And the total for all the children and adults that purchase tickets will be 5, or I want to say 50-50, but $5,050, okay? And if you wanted to keep, like, dollar signs or whatever, I mean, that'd be fine. You don't need to do that. Okay, now we have our two equations. And they look perfect. So we are just going to do what we've done before in the past. We'll do step one, solve one of your equations to equal one of your variables. Okay, oftentimes where we didn't have word problems, we'd always solve for y, but really, to, to, I mean, you can solve for any variable. It will still give you the same answers. So here you could choose A or B that we want to solve. Um, let's plan on solving for A, okay? But like I said, it doesn't matter which one. So let's subtract C from both sides. We'll get um, A equals 2,200 people minus the number of children, which makes sense. And then after that, we will substitute this in for A. Okay, that's step two. We'll get 1.5 per dollar per child plus four times $2,200 minus, or people minus the number of children equals 50, 50, okay? After that, you'll want to um, solve for C uh, by first looking at PEMDAS versus multiplication. So we'll multiply that out. 1.5C plus two times, a calculator, or sorry, four times 2,200, which is 8,800. Uh, minus 4C equals 50-50. Combine like terms and subtract 8,800 from both sides. That will cancel. You'll get um, 3.5 2.5, negative 2.5, C equals 50, 50 minus 800, negative 3750, okay? And then you'll just divide both sides by negative 2.5. That cancels, you'll get C equals... Fifteen hundred children. Okay, so how many children? The number of children is fifteen hundred. And then to find the number of adults, we will plug that into our equation. Into step one. So that will give you A equals 2,200 people minus 1,500 children. That leaves us with 700. So 700 adults. All right, and there you go. Um, hopefully that has been helpful. Um, um, I didn't write things down for this group because I did it 
in this group, group instead because it's kind of the same thing except you're just adding graphing. Okay, this was the very first part. I just did that on the um, quiz paper where I was showing you all the things that you need to be prepared for. We've done one of those, we've done one of those, we've done one of those. Um, we've done a word problem. Okay, we did that kind. And we did one of those. Okay, so that should cover everything. If you are comfortable doing all of these things, you should feel comfortable for the test. Okay, again, for A days, it'll be Tuesday. And for B days, it will be on Wednesday. And I will try and grade those as soon as possible. All right, if you have any questions, please come and talk with me. Um, I want everyone to succeed and feel like they are awesome with math, okay? So, I just, you guys are my favorite students that I've ever had, okay? So, just want you to know that I would do nearly anything for you, okay? All right, just let me know, and good luck.